Amen. We are thankful for everyone. It's a, a little early, but I just wanted to take some time to thank everyone for their prayers, your support. Don't forget to support the church, pay your tithe, and be faithful in your giving. Be faithful in your attendance. Um, just thank you for coming in and joining us online. Please remember, if it's in your heart, if, if, if you feel so kind to do so, to like our videos, subscribe, share the videos, even on YouTube, NTCC McKees Rocks, um, if you'd be so kind to like the videos and share the videos and tell others about it. We thank you for uh, the subscriptions have gone up, and so I'm thankful for that, and we want to get it up to 100 and then even on more than that. But if we get it to 100, I believe we can continue it in the right direction so that at some point we can start broadcasting also from YouTube as well. So thank you for joining us tonight. I um, just want to thank each and every one of you as we go forward. Uh, remember service tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. And then, of course, our 6 p.m. service. Uh, we're thankful for what God is doing in our services, he's blessing our church, uh, the people that come, the new people that has been coming out, God has, people have been praying for salvation, we've had several people baptized with the Holy Ghost, and just different things, God is really moving, God is touching lives, people are growing, people are excited, and we're just thankful for everything that God is doing. I want to start perhaps a two-part uh, Bible study um, and I want to use a very, very popular uh, chapter in the Bible, but I think it's something we need to visit. I think it's something we, ne we need to really look at, uh, 23rd Psalm. And I really believe that in this psalm, excuse me, in this psalm, that God can really speak to our hearts and really help us to grow and mature and get better in our walk with him. So Psalm 23 is six verses, but in these six verses, they are very, very powerful, very, very action-packed. And David, um, you think about all the things that David went through when he was crowned, when he was anointed king. He didn't assume the throne right away. Saul began to pursue him in a jealous rage and hatred and, and an attempt to kill him, bitter toward him because uh, he didn't like the fact that David was going to assume the throne, but David at the same time being a, a, a conscientious person uh, would not harm Saul, would not do any uh, kind of a, a evil or mean thing towards Saul. Uh, but yet he ran, he hid up in the hills. Um, uh, Saul was in very, very hot, hot pursuit. And not only that, uh, once David did assume uh, the throne, he messed up, he made some mistakes, he, he disobeyed God, he stayed back uh, when the kings go to battle and he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Her husband worked for David on the front lines, Uriah the Hittite, and uh, he was responsible for having Uriah the Hittite killed and uh, impregnated his wife. So he was uh, guilty of murder, guilty of adultery. And then the baby that came from that union between you, you, uh, Bathsheba and David, God took the baby and David had to live with that. And God told him that the sword would never leave his house. But yet, this, is, this goes to show you that in your walk with God, as you face your ups and downs, as you deal with the difficulties that go on in your life, through all of that, your relationship with God should grow. Your relationship with God should mature. Your relationship with God should, should continue to elevate and go up one level after another after another as you realize how much God loves you, 
how much God cares for you, how forgiving and merciful that God is. And, and David, no doubt, realized this after everything that God had done for him, even with, with, with the things that David did in disobedience to God. And so he penned this by the Holy Ghost. For the Bible said that all scriptures was given by the inspiration of God. And, uh, and it is profitable uh, for correction and reproof and such like. So by the Holy Ghost, David penned Psalm 23. We're going to read it. And if you have your Bibles and you turn, and you turn to it, I want you to read along with me. Uh, wherever you are. Now, if you're driving, of course, you can't do that. But if you're uh, in the comfort of your home or if you're somewhere where you can safely do that, let's read Psalm 23, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One of the greatest chapters in the Bible. Uh, I'd like for my wife to pray at this time. Father, we thank you for this Bible study. I just ask that you would Help my husband to teach the message you've given him, the lesson, Lord, and help us to have receiving hearts and minds and to obey your word. We just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you very much. And uh, we appreciate your your comments, and, uh, your, your uh, likes and, and everything that you, if you hear something you like, be Feel free to type in amen. Feel free to type in praise, the praise hands, the prayer hands, whatever it is. Uh, we appreciate your support in any way, your interaction, in any way that you would like to. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The first part of this chapter David makes a declaration. David makes a declaration. And I want you to listen to this. And I want you to say to yourself, can you say this with love? Can you say this genuinely? And can you say this with confidence? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. What is David talking about here? Two things. He's speaking about his relationship with God, with the Lord. His relationship with the Lord. What is he saying about his relationship with the Lord? He's relating his relationship with the Lord by declaring that he is his shepherd. This speaks of the relationship with God must be personal. You can't live off another person's relationship with God. You're not going to go to heaven because you have a relative that's saved, a, a good friend of yours that's saved. It's a blessing if you're influenced by others. It's a blessing if you were raised in a Christian home. It's a blessing if you have whoever was the person that's responsible 
for uh, um, uh, what you would call it, uh, testifying to you or uh, witnessing to you. Lord have mercy. Good thing. Of the, whoever the person was that witnessed to you, invited you to church, whatever it entailed, all those things are a blessing. But at the end of the day, the relationship with God has to be personal. It has to be your relationship. And so David is declaring that the Lord is my shepherd. I have my own personal relationship with God. So if I'm going to church with someone, if I'm friends with somebody that's in church, whatever happens with them, we're not saying we want people to leave, we want people to quit, we want people to give up. It's difficult sometimes, but your relationship with God should be your relationship with God, no matter what another person does. If another person goes wayward, if another person falters, you got to pray for them, love them, care for them, and all of those things. But you have to do what you have to do. And so what's, what's a shepherd anyway? And why is it that a relationship with God is referred to by David as a shepherd? A shepherd is one that tends to the needs of, of a flock of sheep or a flock. And his main job outside of protecting them and looking after them is to lead them to pasture. Lead them, guide them, protect them, and take them safely to pasture so that they can eat, so that they can grow, so that they can be strengthened so that they can be profitable to the owner, okay? And God is interested in you growing. God is interested in you being nurtured. God is interested in you being protected. God is interested in you being looked after. That's why David said, with all the things that I've done, with all of my ups and downs, God has been my protection. God has led me and fed me and taken care of me. I've grown, I've matured because God has taken care of me. Because the Lord is my shepherd. He's leading me, he's guiding me, he's taking care of me. One of the, a key verse that I want to share with you is found in Psalm 27 and 11. Psalm 27 and 11. It says, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. And you see, what did David say? The Lord is my shepherd. Who was pursuing him? Saul. Um, and not only that, um, the people who was backing Saul, he, he was using them to pursue David, to look for David, to find out where he was so that he could put hands on him, so that he could destroy him, so that he could kill him. And I'm telling you right now, if you're serious about serving God, if you really love God, there's going to be times when, you will, when, when the enemy of your soul will pursue you. The enemy of your soul will use people to try to destroy you, scandalize your name, hurt your character, mess your life up, mess up your reputation because they're being used of the enemy. But in all of that, you have to realize that no matter what they do, no matter how they do it, that Lord, teach me thy way. Oh Lord, and lead me in a plain path. In other words, no matter what people do to you, no matter what kind of uh, evil they bring your way, no matter what they try to do to destroy you, let God keep leading you, let God keep guiding you, let God keep protecting you, let God keep taking care of you, because if you do that, he's going to always keep you one step. David always stayed one step ahead of, of Saul. 
Saul was so frustrated and upset because every time when he thought he had David in his hands, God gave him one step ahead. And so you serve God, you be faithful to God, let him lead you, let him guide you, let him protect you, let him nurture you, let him lead you to pasture his word, to walk in the spirit, to live holy, to obey God. And God will give you victory over your enemies. So that's the first thing. Establish that the Lord is your shepherd, your guide, your protection, your nurturer, the one that makes sure you're fed, taken care of. And if you do that, God will see to it that you will always stay one step ahead. So establish that tonight. Establish that right now. If there's any question in your life that something has faltered between you and God, take care of it right now. Deal with it right now. Make sure that he is in charge. Make sure he's leading your family. Make sure he's taking care of you. Make sure he's number one. Because there is going to come a time when you're going to need God, when you're going to need His protection, when you're going to need, when you're, He's going to, you need Him to provide for you, lead you to pasture, and all of these things. Number two, the second thing um, in the Psalm of twenty-three, the first part, the Lord is my shepherd. The second part of this is, I shall not want. Now, remember, there's a common thread through this. The whole psalm is personal. David say, I, my, me, this. He's talking about him and he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And then next he said, I. Now, it's one thing for God to bless my wife. It's one thing for God to bless Brother James. It's one thing for God to bless Brother Steele. It's one thing for, for God to bless Brother, Sister Stevie, Brother Mike, Sister Jackie, Sister Stalwart. And we just go down the line of all the people, Sister Sandy, Brother James, um, Wait. Um, I mean, we can just go down the line of all the various people in the church. And if I didn't call your name, it's not personal. I'm just sharing. It's a blessing that you get blessed. But what did David say? I shall not want. It's something else. When you have allowed the Lord to be your shepherd and he returned that with the blessings of God. When he returned that with favor upon your life. What did David say? I shall not want. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Supply. Every need will be supplied. He said, I shall not want. I thank God for supplying every need. I thank God for meeting every need in your life, in my life, in the life of those who come, in the life of those who are serving him in our church, in other churches, uh, in other countries. He is a supplier. God knows how to meet the need. God knows how to take care of his children. Philippians 4.19 says, but my God, there it is, my God. Uh, uh, Paul writing to the people of Philippi, why? Because your relationship with God is personal. It's good to pray for others, but, it's, but you, you also need God to move in your life, in your family. He said, my God. Shall what? Supply what? All oh, my need. If you're watching this, I want you to type the word all. And I want you to type it over and over. My God shall supply 
There's nothing that God won't do for you. All my needs, all my needs, according to his riches in glory, right? In, by, in Christ Jesus. You have to know and you have to understand that as a child of God, that no matter what your situation is, no matter where you find yourself, whether it be marital problems, financial problems, uh, work problems, uh, relationship problems in the family, uh, your children, whatever the case may be, if you walk with God, if you allow him to be your shepherd, if your relationship with God is the way it should be, he will supply. I said, God will supply. And I'm doing everything I can to stay calm here. But I, I'm, I'm feeling the presence of God, knowing that he will meet the need. I tell you what, right there, if you're at home, if you're not driving, I want you to slip your hands up right now and thank God for supplying. Thank God for meeting the need. Thank God for touching your life, moving in your life, uh, accomplishing his will in your life. God, thank you for blessing our transportation. God, thank you for moving on the job. God, thank you for moving in my spiritual situation, moving in my mentality, moving in my emotions, moving in my spirit. God, thank you for handling what's going on with my children. God, thank you for dealing with the situation in my marriage or whatever the case may be. God will supply. So no matter where you find yourself, no matter how bleak it looks, maybe you're watching this and your situation looks bleak. You, you, it looks like, Pastor, I, I, I think I'm going down for the last count. I, 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 Pastor, my back is against the wall. Pastor, it's dark. Pastor, it's, it's doom and gloom. Pastor, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this one. I'm here to tell you that God will supply. As I begin to feel the anointing of God right now, somebody's going through something. Somebody's dealing with something that you, you, you need God to move on your behalf right now. And right now, we're going to pray by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that God will accomplish his will in your situation, that God will resurrect, that God will resurrect your Lazarus, that God will take a situation that looks hopeless and show you that he's God and show you that he can bring it back to life. He can bring your finances back to life. He can bring your marriage back to life. He can bring your, your relationship with your family back to life. He can work your, 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 you've been faltering in your personal walk with God. God is able to forgive you. God is able to clean you up. He's able to rectify the situation and cause you to walk like hinds feet on high places. God is able. I said God is able right now by the Holy Ghost. God, I thank you and I praise you right now because we know that you can supply. We know that you have the power to meet the need in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Amen. And so moving right along, moving right along, um, the third part of this uh, song is he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Thank God that when we're caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, when we're busy here and there and everywhere, when problems are busy in our life, when we are busy overthinking things, when we are busy uh, being involved in things that maybe we should step back and give it to God. He makes us. He, 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 he proves himself to you and tell you to stop.
Just stop where you are. And then I think of um, Matthew chapter 11. Because you see, you need to give it a rest tonight. Give it a rest. You're troubled tonight, give it a rest. You got problems on every hand, give it a rest. You got situations going on in your life and you're running around, you're trying to figure this out, you're trying to figure that out. You're running around, you're doing this and doing that. God is saying, stop right now and I will give you rest. I will bring peace into your world. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If that's not assurance, I don't know what assurance is. God said, if you come to him tonight, and if you're labor, if you're burdened down with labor and a heavy laden, he said, I will give you rest. What are you resting in? You're resting in the assurance that God's going to take care of it. You're resting in the assurance that God has the power to fix whatever is wrong. You are resting and you have peace and you don't you no longer have to trouble yourself about it because you know that it's in good hands. Tonight, your problems, your circumstances, your situations, your worries, your burdens, your that thing that as you depress, uh, things that you are, are overburdened about, put it in his hands tonight. Uh, the second part of uh, verse 29 of Matthew chapter 11, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find what? Rest for your souls. You're carrying burdens that you're not equipped to carry. Hitch your yoke to Jesus and let him carry the burden. But while he's carrying the burden, you're learning, you're watching, and you're seeing what he's doing so that you know how to walk with God, how to carry yourself, how to live for God, how to obey God, all right? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you learn how to trust God, when you learn how to trust God, when you learn how to practice faith properly, you can rest in his power and ability to meet the needs in your life. So I want you to join in with me. We're going to stop right there. And next Saturday, be at the will of the Lord. We're going to go back and, and we're going to get back into Psalm 23. And, and, be, and, and, and hopefully we can finish it part two. I really believe that this is needful. I really believe God's moving. I really believe there's people that need to hear this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. God has to make us rest. How does he make us rest? By assuring us that he has it. By assuring us that he's, he has the power to take care of whatever's wrong. If you're burdened down with a health issue, with a sickness, God is able. We all know people, we have family members. My wife and I have family members that are going through sickness. Some of you may have a, a sickness or may know of someone. Right now, we believe in God to supply. We believe in God to accomplish his will because he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to what? Lie down in green pastures. I know that my God can do it. To him, there's nothing to it. I know, look up when storms of rage are raging. He is the rock of ages. I'm here to tell you that God can supply. That God is able. That God knows what he's doing. So remember service tomorrow at 11. Thank you for joining us. Please like and share the video. I hope and pray that you have benefited.
from being on with us tonight and that you tell others and that um, you continue to join us. Tell others about uh, uh, the, the link. Give the, you know, pass the link on to others. Invite other people to church. Uh, let's remember 1% of 60, of, of 6,000. We're pursuing 60 faithful people in our church. Of course, we have more than that that we're working with, but we want to believe God for throughout the year to, to end with 60 faithful people. Be faithful to God in your attendance. Be faithful to God in your tithing. And be faithful to God in uh, uh, your word, the word of God, your prayer life, and witnessing to other people. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you is our sincere prayer. God bless you.